What's up, transit? How you feeling? You know what? That's the energy I was hoping for. I wanted that level of energy at nine. I didn't get it, but y'all are a little bit more awake. You're a little bit more with it. Uh, if I, what was that? <laughs> if I haven't met you yet, my name is Stuart. I'm one of the pastors on staff here in transit. So uh, if it's your first time, we just want to say welcome. Uh, I am slightly biased about this, but I think if you are a middle school aged student, human being, then this is the greatest place to be on Sunday morning. So we're glad you're here. If it's your first time, seriously, we hope you love it. We hope you come back. You're always welcome here to hang with us in transit. Uh, you caught us in the middle of uh, this summer kickoff series, and I love summer. One of the things I love about summer is just being outside. So it's daylight longer, it's hot outside, you can go to the pool, you can go to the beach. Uh, one of the things that we like to do as a family is we like to climb Sawney Mountain. Uh, who's been to the top of Sawney Mountain and looked out over the... Most of you, great, so you'll totally understand. This is the trail map of climbing Sawney Mountain. Now, it's a little bit tricky, but I'm going to explain, okay? So... To get to the top right here, the observation deck, you get up there, you look over. It is gorgeous. It's beautiful. If you haven't, just do it. It's not actually like a super long hike. In fact, if you park in this parking lot, this short trail is less than a mile. So you can literally just hike up, you know, 15 minutes. Unless you have young children like us, it takes a little longer. But easy enough. So if you want just a beautiful thing, enjoy God's creation, uh, you should go do it, get some silence, whatever that is. But you can also park in this parking lot, and it's much longer. So in this one, you got come all the way here, and then you go up here in the zigzag, and then all the way up here. So it's almost two miles from this one, okay? So you can go two miles from here, under a mile from here. And uh, so about a month ago, we went out, and we were, uh, took my family, so I got little kids. And we also took some friends who had never done it before. So I was like, cool, just come with us, you'll enjoy it, it's a beautiful day. You know, go get outside. It's nice. So we park down here, and we go up the trail, and we hang there, and it's a clear day. You can see just mountains all the way, way into North Georgia. It's cool. And so we hang up there for a while and um, take some pictures and just enjoy it. And then we start heading back down. And as we start heading back down, I've got these people who haven't done it before who we're taking, and I start realizing, I don't recognize this. I don't recognize where I am. This does, I don't think we've seen this part of the trail before. But I don't really want to admit it yet because we got first timers that I'm with. And so I'm trying to figure out how do I solve this and still like maintain my dignity and honor um, that I don't know where we are. So I just kind of keep walking. And I know that I probably could have asked somebody. And eventually we make it to a trail sign. And I'm like, hey, guys, I'm just going to take a look at this because it, it was about the time that I thought we should have been back to the parking lot. But instead... Instead of returning this way, we returned this way. Oops. So we kept going and we kept going. And by about here, I thought we should be back to the parking lot and we're not. We're on a mountainside. And so eventually we got to this little where the green meets the blue. And where the green meets the blue, there is this little place that tells you where you are on the trail. I'm like, y'all, I'm so sorry. I thought we were on the right path. We're on the wrong path. I should have told you earlier, but there's only a, there is a little bit of good news we've got to cut through. So I know that we're on the wrong path, but we can go ahead and get back on the right path. So we took this back and headed back and ended up where we want to end up. And so that was a relief to me. Uh, if you were here last week when we kicked off this series, On the Right Path, you heard Lauren talking about how God genuinely cares about the path we're on. Not only that, he cares about the destination. And that some decisions that we're making now and the path that we're on now, that's actually going to help shape uh, the destination, where we end up, and God genuinely cares about it. So if God cares about where we end up, but we're making decisions now, the question that you and I should be asking ourselves, especially in middle school where you're getting more freedom, is how do I know if I'm choosing the right path? I, I should have known it early on as I realized I, I, I don't really know where this is leading. I haven't seen this before, that I was leading all of us on the right path. But for you, maybe it's just some simple questions. Because as you, in middle school, start to get more freedoms, that means that you get to choose more of your own path. And so what I know is that th do you have someone who you would like to become? And you're very clear. You can actually point out some of the people probably who you don't want to become. And so you want to choose the decisions that help get you there. Now... The thing is, uh, we should be able to um, have 
people around us who can help guide us in the right path. And there are little indicators that help us know whether we're making the right decisions. Now, this could have to do, seriously, this could have to do with whether you should keep playing baseball or you've been thinking about stopping because you played all your life and doing something else. Is this something I should do? Is that the right path I should go down is is stopping this and choosing something else? Or should I try out for this play? Or I don't really know. Or should I continue in drama? I actually would like to be a part of the band. So is that a right decision? Or sometimes it's not just things that you're choosing. It could be uh, your friends. So for you, you're like, I, I want to hang out with this person. We, start, we have a couple classes together, or we're neighbors, but is that the right choice? Is hanging out with this person the type of person that's going to help me down the path and to hit the destination I want to go in? Now, for you, you're going to get to choose some of this. The things that you do with your time, the things that the people that you're spending time with, the things that you're choosing to look at and and watch, and you think, gosh, I don't know, I probably don't have permission to look at this and watch this, but is it okay, or does it put me on the wrong path? Well, there's a guy named King Solomon uh, who wrote the book of Proverbs, and he's the wisest man to ever live, and Lauren talked about him last week. We looked at something that uh, King Solomon had written last week in Proverbs, and we're going to look at something else he has to say today. But here's something I want you all to know. We don't just look at what King Solomon wrote because he's wise. We also look at it because we believe that anyone who wrote something written in the Bible, that they were actually inspired by God. The Bible is like no other book. So it's not just writing something that someone wise wrote. It's actually writing something that God inspired these authors to write. So, so the book of the Bible is much more important than just looking at what someone wrote. It's looking at something that God has a message for not only King Solomon's audience a long time ago, but God has inspired it to where it's alive and useful for you and for me. And so that's why when you come in and hang, in, hang out in transit, we're always going to take things that are in the Bible and teach you some things that help you make wise choices and teach you about who God is and who you are in transit. So that's why it's not just King Solomon that's important right now. It's that it's from the inspired word of God. And so that's why throughout transit, sixth graders, as this is new to you, that we'll be encouraging you uh, from things that are written in the Bible and encourage you to read it. So here's what King Solomon wrote in Proverbs. He said, the prudent see danger, they can see it, and they take refuge. So not only do prudent people see the danger, they see that they're on the wrong path, making an unwise decision, they then do something about it. They take refuge. But the simple, so here's a comparison, you're either prudent or you're simple, but the simple keep going and pay the penalty. I think probably for most of us in our home, we've probably made some decisions, uh, or maybe at school we've made some decisions that had consequences. We all make bad decisions. So this is not about being able to make every single right choice. I want you to know that we all uh, make bad choices that are going to have consequences. In fact, the Bible says that we have all sinned. We've all fallen short of perfection. And so it's not about whether we can be perfect. It's just about recognizing and seeing the danger where we don't go too far down a path. We're able to reroute like I was on Sunny Mountain to get back to the right path. Now, real quick, uh, prudent is not a word that we use very often. And because this is what we want, you and I want to be, let's define it for a second. So prudent means that you are acting with or showing care and thought for the future. If you're prudent, it just means that you care about the future. You give thought to the future. You think about the future and you will actually take action when you look at, oh, this is how something will affect it. I do care about it. I do think about who I'm becoming. I do care about the consequences and who this, what this decision, how this decision is going to affect my life. So as a prudent person, I'm going to take some action based on my care for who I'm becoming. Which I would guess if we took a survey and said, hey, do you want to care about the person that you're becoming? Do you care about your future? You'd all say yes. So back to the verse. So for, for those of us who care about the future, who think about it, who are willing to take action based on it, We want to see the danger, so to be able to see the signs, be able to see like, hey, no matter how far down the wrong path you've gone, that you can go, I just don't think that that's that's a good decision. There are going to be consequences there. The simple, it doesn't say that they don't see it. They might actually see this is a bad decision. And for some of you, you, uh, I have definitely made some simple-minded decisions where I just did something that I wanted to, even though it had a consequence. I did something I wanted to in the moment and sacrifice what I want for myself long term. And King Solomon's going, hey, that's not a prudent, it's not a wise decision. It doesn't help you end up where you are. 
But here's good news for you today. We have a God who is our perfect heavenly father. And so I don't know what your father's, what your parents, how the house that you grew up in was like. But what I do know that our heavenly father, he's okay. He actually, no matter how far off we've gone, he always has grace and will always lead us back to the right track. Like I had that little cut through that took me back to the right track. God would say, hey, I want you to know I have grace for the decisions that you've made. I just don't want you to deal with the penalty and the consequences. I want more for your life. And I want more for who you are becoming. And I love you so much that I'm going to give you some signs. And no matter how far off track you've gone, I'm going to give you the opportunity to forgive you, to have grace, and to put you back on the right track. Not only towards who he is, your perfectly heavenly father, wants you to be, but also as you are prudent, who you ultimately know that you would like to become. And your choices now are affecting that. Like when I was on the trail... Um, what I'm grateful for is that there was something here and I didn't end up all the way here. And I don't know what it would have been. There, but there were signs. There were signs for me, just like for you as you are trying to make some decisions. I want you to know there will be signs along the way. Like in this one, there were signs that these numbers, there are numbers on the trees and they count up like 15, 16, 17, 18. I should have known that it should have gone 17, 16, 15, 14 on my way back down, but it was going 20, 21, 22, 23. That should have been a sign, a clear sign of you're on the wrong trail. Just the simple hesitation inside of me of I haven't seen this before, that should have been a sign. I could have just asked someone, hey, excuse me, you're coming up. What parking lot did you park in? Oh, the visitor center? I need to turn around and go the other direction. There were signs. And if I were prudent in that moment, I would have seen them and, and turned around at the beginning and thankfully eventually was able to get back on the right path. But I want to talk about some, as far as your life goes and the decisions that you're making, some possible signs that might help you know I'm on the right path, becoming the person I want to become, and uh, towards the life that God has for me, okay? About your heavenly Father who loves you. So here's some signs. Here's some possible signs. People. There are going, just like I could have asked some of these people along the trail, there are going to be people in your life where you're thinking, should I do this or should I not? Is this okay or is it not? And it could be your parents, and it could be a teacher or a coach. It could be a parent of a friend who you really have come to trust. But what I know for sure is that it's the small group leaders who are sitting next to you. That as we talk about things in transit, and as you navigate things during your week, during the summer, during the school year, that sixth graders, these leaders, these two adults in this high schooler, they're going to walk with you for the next three years, and they're a person who can be a sign to help you know, hey, maybe that's not a wise decision, maybe this is. And they're open to whatever questions you may have and wherever you are. So people in your life can help be a sign, can help be a sign uh, that, to help you know that you're on the right path or the wrong path. Transit. And the more you come here, the more we want to encourage you for what God has for you. What Whoever is up here sharing on stage the words of the song that we're singing, they can literally help guide you towards what is true and what's helpful for your life. The Bible, we just talked about it. This is a place where God has given us these things to learn about what's right, what's wrong. All different sorts of situations that you're going to navigate, God has given us counsel on them in his word. Our conscience, that feeling, right? where you're thinking about doing something and you just think, gosh, I don't know if that's a good decision. That's something that God literally put inside of you to help you choose right from wrong, to help you make a wise decision, to put you on the path towards the destination, to become the type of person that you want to be. And sometimes it's after you've made a decision and your conscience feels guilty and you go, you know what? I wondered if that was wrong and now I really feel like that was, that was not right. I should not have done that. That's okay. God's given you that. To help you get back. That's not The guilty is just to help you get back and go, oh, yeah, there is something God wants for me. And I can step right back into it because I have a God who's gracious and he forgives me. And I can step right back into it. Uh, the last one is observation. If you're choosing friends and right now you're actually having some friend trouble, which there are for sure people in this room who right now are thinking about the, the friend who has historically been their closest friend. And now you guys are kind of, you kind of, you're becoming different people. And you're observing the life that they're living. You're observing some of the decisions that they're making. And you realize, I don't know that that's where I want to be. You'll literally just observe and go, you know what? I need to change paths. I need to change friends. I need to change friend groups. I don't need to be hanging out with them. And so we just want to encourage you to be on the lookout 
for signs that you are on or considering the wrong path. You might already be on it, and cool, God is gracious. He wants to show you, hey, that's not actually helping you become the person that you want to come. I want to protect you from penalties and consequences. And so here, let me help show you that, that you're on it. Or if you're thinking about it, why don't you process it? Process it with your parents. Process it with your small group leader if it's something you don't want to talk to your parents about. That's why we have them here in transit to walk alongside you. And so we're going to talk about that, a little bit about how this plays out in your life uh, here in a minute in small group. But one quick question is we're talking about friends and road signs. Just a fun question to think about. What road sign could be used to describe your group of friends? Would it be like stop, cliff is coming, steep decline ahead is your friends, or is it like rest stop ahead? And they're positive and they're encouraging. I don't really know, but you just think about that. I'm going to pray, and then 7th and 8th graders, you guys are dismissed. God, uh, 